there's true ways, like electrically, of talking about these things, and then there's ways that serve you so that you can be a good diagnostician to build up a circuit. Is a load really a separation point between the two halves of the circuit? It's still connected, but it does create resistance. And so as far as we're concerned, you have to run a circuit between a load, and the load is that kind of point of separation. So that if I read, because we're talking practically using a voltmeter here, if I take a voltmeter and I read between these two points, what am I going to read? I'm going to read zero, because it's, these two points are co connected directly to each other. If I read across a closed switch, what am I going to read? I'm going to read zero, because the switch is closed. The switch doesn't do any work. The switch is just making a circuit. It's just like, it's just like reading across a wire. If I take this contactor, and this contactor is closed, and I take a voltmeter, and I read across it like this, I'm going to read nothing. It doesn't matter if voltage is applied or not, I'm going to read nothing because electrically, the two halves of that contactor are the same. They've, they've been connected to each other. Now, if, I take a, if, I, if this switch is closed and I take a meter and I read from here to here, what am I going to read on a 120 volt circuit? I'm going to read 120 volts because I'm wiring in my meter like a load in between the two halves of that circuit. But it's because this load exists. If that load didn't exist, what would happen as soon as I apply power is it would immediately short out. It would immediately either trip a breaker, blow a fuse, or catch something on fire. Because the load acts as that restrictor, if you will. It adds that resistance into the circuit that controls the flow of electrons. Without a load in the circuit, to separate the two halves, you have uncontrolled current flow. Now again, this isn't a We've done so many of these basics classes that I'm not going to go into the basics of what is voltage, what is amperage. We're not going to do that today. So I'm, I, I am making an assumption that you understand some of those things. So you, don't, you can't have uncontrolled flow. Uncontrolled flow is prevented by the load, which restricts, does work, but it also controls the flow of electrons. Quick question, just quick pop quiz. Higher resistance equals lower or higher amperage. Higher resistance equals lower or higher amperage. I'm looking for everybody to answer this. The answer is lower. Very simple. Resistance to, to the motion of electrons equals less electrons moving. Right? It's a very easy thing to get your head around. You're resisting it. Therefore, fewer of them move. Therefore, you have less current. So if you have no resistance, because it's just a wire or very, very little resistance, then there's going to be very little there's little to nothing holding back those electrons. And with little to nothing holding back those electrons, the amperage goes sky high. When the amperage goes sky high, the heat in the circuit goes sky high, and you melt the wire or whatever else, right? That makes sense? Are there, is there anybody in the room who has a question about that? Because this is an oft-disputed topic. All right, we'll move on. Because it actually is a fairly complicated topic when you get into it any further than that. But as far as the circuit is concerned, when there's lower resistance in the circuit, there's higher amperage. When there's higher resistance in the circuit, there's lower amperage. Got that? And the load is what is designed to provide resistance in the circuit. Now, what are some ways that you could add resistance to a circuit in an undesigned manner? You could add too many switches. Switches in and of themselves shouldn't have resistance. Like, they're not designed to, but they can over time. Switches that open and close. And I mean, you see this with safeties that are, that are opening and closing because you say you have a furnace and the furnace is you know, going out on high temperature. So when that's happening or it's rolling out, and the rollout switch is opening and closing. Over time, those switches are arcing. And as they arc, they build up resistance in them because carbon builds up on the contact points. And so eventually, the switches themselves become little loads and start to add resistance into the circuit as well, which causes all kinds of problems. You can add resistance in a circuit by having a contactor where the points get pitted and nasty on it. That adds resistance because while it's supposed to close and make perfect contact, over time it stops making perfect contact because there's carbon and crap that builds up in there. Ants crawl in your contactor. That's a perfect example. They start to build up their little bodies as they get crushed and decimated, become little resistors in your, in your contactor circuit. So that's resistance that's not designed. If you, don't, if you don't torque down a wire properly, you leave a wire loose and it's sitting there arcing, that's resistance that's not designed. Because the only place that resistance is designed in the circuit is where? The load. And when we read across the load, when the circuit is energized, that's when we read 
our applied voltage across the load, which is why if, I'm, if I ask you, does the, does the contactor have 24 volts, what I'm asking you is, on the coil of the contactor, that's the load, that's the part that does work of pulling the contactor in, it's electromagnet, do we have 24 volts applied across the load? If you take the line going into the contactor, and just like, just like with the light, and you read in, in between any two points that are electrically the same, you're going to read nothing, no matter whether this switch is open or closed. Well, actually, that's not true. If I read on the other side, that we'll get into that in a second. But if I read in the two electrical points that are exactly the same, you're going to read zero. And it doesn't matter if there's electrical potential there or not. Because remember, potential, it's another word for voltage, that just means there's the potential to do work. There's a charge that exists there. But it doesn't mean that it's actually doing anything. Right? And in order to wire in a voltmeter in such a way that you're going to read something, you've got to wire it in just like you're wiring in a light bulb to make it light up. And if I take a light bulb, and I take a light bulb and I wire it in like this, is that light bulb going to light up? No, because I'm connecting the two leads of the light bulb, because again, every load has two wires, has two connection points. I'm connecting them to two points that have no difference in charges. I've got to connect them between two points that have a difference in charges, right? Which then brings me to what I just spoke improperly there, which is if I've got a switch. So let's say let's say that we've um, we'll put a we'll put a motor here, just a simple shaded pole motor, with a normally open switch. All right, now it's a 120 volt circuit. This is neutral, so this is the line side of the switch. This is the load side of the switch. This is the load. This is neutral. Now I'm going to use my fingers, and my fingers are meter leads, right? And I'm going to put them in different places and tell me, with everything being as it's shown here, what we're going to read. So just as shown. You see this switch? It's normally open. It's drawn as open. OK? You with me? So what happens if I read between here and here, what do I read? I read 120 volts. What happens if I read between here and here? What do I read? Zero. Right, zero. They're electrically the same, right? What happens if I read between here and here? What do I read? Zero. zero. What happens if I read between here and here? What do I read? What happens if I read between here and here? What do I read? OK, that's correct. You do read 120. But why do you read 120 between here and here? Because there is a difference in potential between this point and this point. That load is in the circuit. Now, when I connect my meter in, will that motor start running? No, because no, that's not how that works. I'm not going to go into why. But <laughs> you're going to just understand this. Understand, just, just, just take this and put it in your brain without going into all of the back theory about this. You will read the total applied voltage when you read across the load. Now, right now, if I read from here to here, I'm going to read what? Zero, because the switch is open. So there is no applied voltage across the load, right? If I read across an open switch, I'm going to read the applied voltage on that circuit so long as the rest of the circuit is intact. This is sort of a trick question, because let's imagine, which is why reading across an open switch is a, uh, it's, it's not a bad test, but it, it, can be, it can get you in trouble sometimes. Let's say. So I got two open switches. So I read across here. Now what am I going to read? Zero. Zero, right? And if I just give you the rule that reading across an open switch gives you the applied voltage, that's going to kind of trick you because I'm, I, I have potential here, but I'm still not going to read it because the rest of the circuit isn't intact. So the, the rest of the circuit has to be intact for that test to work. Well, if you test to ground, but again, testing to ground is very fickle because you're relying on something when you test to ground. What are you relying on? You're, you're, you're relying on the fact that the ground is actually properly connected. And that's tricky because it isn't always the case. Now, should it be? Yes. Is it a valid test? Yes. But it's not a valid test in this particular application. A better way to do it is to walk through the circuit. So that would mean I take my black lead and I go, boom, and I leave it there. 
How many, what will I read? What will I read? So I know the switch is open. I know this switch is open, right? That's, that's a really good way to use a voltmeter to diagnose a circuit. You peg your one side to a, to a known opposite of where of the of the line side coming in, which you know neutral ground L2, whatever you want to call it. You just peg it there, and then you walk through the circuit and see where you lose. As soon as you lose voltage, now you know that's where the circuit opened. 